Okay, there's two more things I want to talk about in section 1.8. The equations of circles and symmetries of graphs. Uh, recall there's two important formulas we looked at earlier. We looked at the midpoint formula and the distance formula. These are going to come into play today, especially the distance formula. Okay, let's talk about circles first. We define a circle to be the set of all points in the xy plane, set of all points xy, uh, whose distance from a fixed point, hk, is a constant, and we call that constant r. Uh, r is called the radius, hk is called the center, and xy can be any point on the edge of the circle. Now the way we get the derive the equation of the circle is to use the distance formula. What is the distance from any point xy on the outer edge of the circle to the uh, center hk? Well, isn't it r? So by the distance formula you get that r equals x minus h squared plus y minus k squared and then the square root of the whole thing. And if you square both sides you get this and then we rewrite it like this. So the equation of a circle centered at hk with radius r is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. You need to know this formula. But I think if you, if you re remember how we derived it, it's, it's not that hard to remember, is it? Question is, what information do you need to find the equation of the circle? In general, don't you need the center and a radius? So let's say you're given the center and a radius. How would you get the equation of the circle? Well, it's easy. You're going to plug in negative 2 for h, and you're going to plug in 1 for y, and you're going to plug in 3 for r. So you just plug them in. Notice this becomes x plus 1 squared, so this is your answer. And by the way, you don't have to multiply it out. You can leave it like that. Okay, what if, what if, what if we're told that the, um, the radius is 1 and the center is 0, 0? Well, that's actually even easier. We're just plugging in 0 for h, 0 for k, and 1 for r. And you get this, uh, this equation. This is about the simplest circle you can get, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Uh, the center is 0, 0, the radius is 1. We call that the unit circle, and it, it's very important next quarter in Math 142 when we start talking about trig. We use that a lot. All right, this is a little different. What if I tell you that the circle ha on the end points of the diameter are the points negative 2, 2, and 2, 0? So the picture looks kind of like, like this. You got this circle, and on the endpoints of the diameter are these two points. Uh, the question would be, okay, what information do you need? You need to know the center and the radius, right? Well, isn't the center just the midpoint uh, of this line segment? And then the, the radius, you, you could um, take the diameter and take half of it, or couldn't you just go from the center out to the end and call it the radius? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to first find the midpoint. And that, that, that turns out to be the center of the, of the circle. The midpoint, you just add negative 2 plus 2 over, t over 2 would be 0, comma, 2 plus 0 over 2 would be 1. So there, there's your center, 0, 1. Now to find the radius, I'm just going to go from 0, 1 out to 2, 0. So it becomes 2 minus 0 squared plus 0 minus 1 squared, square rooted, I get square root of 5. That's the radius. So the equation of the circle, if you plug that in the equation of the circle, you get x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 5. Okay. I think this one's a little bit easier, actually. Um, if, I, if you're given the equation of a circle, how would you find the center and radius? Well, if it's written in this form, it's not too hard. The center would be negative 1, 2, right? And the radius is not 3. The radius is the square root of 3, because isn't this r squared? Okay, well, what if they give you the equation of the circle, but it's not written in that form. What you have to do is write it in that form, and the way you do that is to complete the square on the x's, and you complete the square on the y's. So what you, what you want to do first is group the x's together. Let's, let's look at it as, you can re rewrite this as x squared plus 4x plus y squared plus 2y equals 3. Now we're going to complete the square on the x's, we're going to complete the square on the y's, what number would you add to the x's to make this into a perfect square? Remember how that works? You take half the coefficient of x, which is 2, you square it, which is 4. So you have to add 4. But you can't just go adding it to one side, you have to add it to the other side as well. What's the magic number that makes the y's into a perfect square? You take half of 2, which is 1, you square it, you get 1. 
So we're going to add 1 to both sides also. The left side, the x's can be written as x plus 2 squared. The y's can be written as y plus 1 squared. And then here you get 8. So um, the center would be negative 2, negative 1. And the radius is not 8. It's actually the square root of 8, which is 2 radical 2. Okay, the, uh, that was the first thing I want to talk about. Second thing I want to talk about, look in your book on page um, uh, 95. There's a uh, discussion of sym symmetries of graphs. And um, I want to go over that bri briefly. See this graph right here? This graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Whatever it does above the x-axis, it does the same thing below. And you can tell that from looking at the equation. Because look, if x, y lies in the graph, then isn't it clear that x negative y does too? But if x negative y lies on the graph, it has to make the equation true. So what that says is, if, if you have the equation, you can test if it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis if you replace y with negative y and get the same equation back, then it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Same is true with the y-axis. If the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, then if x, y is on the graph, doesn't negative x, y have to be on the graph? But if negative x, y is on the graph, negative x, y has to make the equation true. So what that says is, if you replace x with negative x, you should get the same equation back if it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Origin's a little different. A graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. You could, I like to think of it as whatever it does on one side of the y-axis, it has to do the opposite on the other. You could also say that if x, y lies on the graph, you can see that negative x, negative y lies on the graph. But if negative x, negative y lies on the graph, that means it has to make the equation true. So the way you test to see if, if the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin is to replace both negative x and negative y for x and y, respectively. Uh, but by the way, the reason why it's called symmetric with respect to the origin is if you look at the line segment from x, y to negative x, negative y, it'll go through 0, 0. All right, so let, let's look at some examples here. Uh, on this first one, uh, give you the equation is uh, x equals 4 minus the absolute value of y. And so I want to ask you these questions. Is it symmetric with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, origin, or none of the above? Uh, and it turns out, let's test the x-axis first. All we have to do is replace y with negative y. So you, you put negative y in here. The absolute value of negative y is just the absolute value of y. So yes, you do get the same equation back. So the graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Now, it might also be symmetric with respect to other axes as well. If, if you go back to the same equation, the original equation, and replace x with negative x right here, you don't get the same equation back. So this graph is not symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Origin? No, it's not going to be symmetric with respect to the origin either, because when you replace negative y for y, this, this, this becomes the y. But when you replace negative x for x, it doesn't. So this is not symmetric with respect to the origin. Why don't you do this one? Why don't you hit the pause button? See if you can determine if this, if this equation x squared equals 4 minus y squared, if that's symmetric with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, origin, or neither. Go ahead and hit the pause button. Okay, I get that it is, in fact, did you notice that if you add y squared to both sides, this is just a, a circle centered at 0, 0, radius 2. So it looks like clearly that it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, and origin. And if you replace negative y for y, you get the same equation back. If you replace negative x for x, you get the same equation back. And if you replace them both, you get the same equation back as well. So it's symmetric with respect to all, all three. One more. Look at this one. Try to determine if, if this uh, function, if this equation, y equals the quantity x plus 1 squared, is symmetric with respect to x-axis, y-axis origin. Hit the pause button. Okay, on this one, I get ne none of them. Because, if you, if, in fact, if you were to look at the graph, you know, what we'll see later on this quarter, it's a parabola that's moved over one to the left. It doesn't look like it's symmetric with respect to anything, does it? If you replace um, negative y for y, you don't get the same equation back. If you replace negative x for x, you don't. And at the, both at the same time, you don't. So, so neither. It would be none of the above. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.